When Rogue One came out, fans were quick to notice that several iconic shots from the trailer were nowhere to be found in the final film. And that's because during post-production, the film went through significant rewrites and reshoots, dramatically altering the movie, leaving many fans to wonder what Gareth Edwards' original version of Rogue One would have been like. So let's dive in and find out. Ever since Star Wars first came out, many fans have joked about one of the film's glaring plot holes. Why would the Empire build the Death Star with such a major design flaw, where it could easily be destroyed with a well-placed torpedo hit? And while Rogue One answers this question, I think it's important to point out that this was never a plot hole. Hitting the exhaust port was not only a one in a million shot, Great shot, kid! That was one in a million! But it took a wannabe Jedi using the Force to do it. Don't forget, not only does the first attempt by this guy fail, I get it. It didn't go in. But by the end of the battle, the rebels are down to only a handful of ships, proving what a suicide mission this truly was. Plus, when Tarkin is informed of the station's weakness, Evacuate? In our moment of triumph? I think you overestimate their chances. He considers it insignificant, which also serves to illustrate the Empire's hubris, as foreshadowed by Vader earlier in the film. Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the Force. Nevertheless, whether Rogue One was created to address a plot hole or not is inconsequential, as the story of the Rebels stealing the Death Star plans always seemed to hold the promise of a potentially riveting movie. I just started thinking, you know, that idea from the opening crawl of, of New Hope of stealing the Death Star plans, you know, it's a, just a bit of uh, backstory, but it seems like, you know, that could be a pretty compelling film just by itself. During production of Revenge of the Sith, George Lucas began planning for a live-action Star Wars television series to follow that would be set between the time of the prequel and original trilogies. This inspired Lucas's visual effects supervisor, John Knoll, to write a short treatment for an episode depicting how the Rebels stole the Death Star plans. He would call his episode Destroyer of Worlds, but after pitching it, he realized his story didn't quite align with the show's premise or timeline, which focused on criminal and political power struggles during the period when the Empire is trying to take things over. Regardless, the series would never be made anyway. Fast forward several years to Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilm, which saw Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm's newly appointed president, announce that she planned to create standalone movies distinct from the Skywalker saga, inspiring Noel to pitch his idea again, worried he'd always regret it if he didn't. And he came in and and essentially pitched the idea that spelled out in the opening crawl of New Hope about rebel spies that go in to steal the plans to the Death Star. Following this, director Gareth Edwards, hot off Godzilla, would be hired to helm the picture. But after shooting wrapped and Edwards finished his first cut of the film, Disney execs weren't happy with what they saw, feeling it fell well short of The Force Awakens. And as the first anthology film, there was immense pressure on Disney to ensure its success, as they worried that a poorly received film could potentially hinder future spin-offs from the Skywalker saga. And given what transpired with Solo later on, their apprehensions were justified. This is why writer and director Tony Gilroy, famous for writing the Bourne series, was swiftly brought in to rewrite, rework, and reshoot parts of the movie. One of the bolder choices made in the film was to kill off the main characters. However, in the original script, the characters were kept alive at the end of the film, as Edwards assumed that Disney wouldn't let him kill off the entire cast. A rebel ship would have come down and got Jin and Cassian off the surface before jumping away to hyperspace to rendezvous with Leia's ship as Darth Vader pursues in a Star Destroyer. Vader's Star Destroyer would then begin attacking the ship that Jin and Cassian are on, as they desperately try to transfer the information from the data tapes to Leia's vessel. Finally, Vader would have destroyed their ship, leaving the audience to think that they were dead as Vader's Star Destroyer chases an escaping Leia. The film would have ended with us focused on the debris field from the destroyed ship as the camera pushes in on an escape pod, suggesting our heroes escaped. If this sounds familiar, it's because Han Solo uses a similar trick in Empire Empire Strikes Back as the Falcon floats amongst a bunch of garbage. When Disney and Kathleen Kennedy read the script, much to Edward's relief and surprise, everyone felt the characters should die since they're not in Episode 4. And while this change of Jin and Cassian surviving was made before going to camera and never shot, many other changes were made to the end of the film during reshoots and rewrites. The biggest of those changes was the inclusion of the most striking scene in the film, featuring Darth Vader cutting his way through a swath of rebel troops in a last-ditch attempt 
to recover the Death Star plans. Surprisingly, this scene wasn't suggested by Gilroy or Edwards, but by one of the film's editors, Jabez Olson, who felt Vader needed not only one more scene, but it should be a badass one too. When he mentioned this, it was about four months maybe from, from release, and so we thought, oh, maybe we've missed the opportunity to do this. And Kathy Kennedy came in and uh, Jabez pitched this idea to her and she really loved it. Within a week or two, Edwards was back at Pinewood shooting the scene. And while the crew brainstormed and pitched plenty of outlandish ways for Vader to showcase his command of the force, Edwards ultimately chose to stick to a more grounded approach, staying consistent with what we've seen the character do on screen before, but treating it like a greatest hits. The creation of this scene also allowed for a cameo by Edwards himself. I wanted to have a cameo in the film because I love Star Wars so much, but I was saving it for the right thing and it felt very appropriate to play the guy who runs down the corridor and pulls the handle because that way I get to survive and therefore technically, according to Star Wars canon, I'm in episode four, A New Hope. Allegedly, this scene originally depicted Admiral Raddus and his Mon Calamari crew organizing an evacuation of the ship. While moving down the corridor, the looming shadow of the Death Star passing overhead would have engulfed them in darkness. Understanding that escaping the ship was not an option, they would have exchanged determined glances, focused solely on completing their mission, which they successfully accomplished. Also cut from the film, but glimpsed briefly in the trailer, was a scene of Vader aboard the Death Star, which would have seen him having a conversation with Tarkin and also Krennic. Some of the most breathtaking and heart-pounding shots in the trailer saw our heroes running through the base, then across the beach, dodging blaster fire on Scarif. And that's because in the original cut of the film, the transmission tower was separate from the main base. And to transmit the plans, our heroes had to escape and run along the beach before going up the tower. This is also where the shot of director Krennic comes from, as he pursues our heroes to the tower. Disney felt this whole sequence just ran on way too long. So as they brainstorm ways to cut it down, they realized that a fast and easy solution would be to just put the tower in the base so that they don't have to run across the beach to get there, which resulted in cutting that entire sequence out and reshooting the events at the top of the tower. Edwards would call cutting these scenes along the beach heartbreaking, but understood that they needed to keep the film's runtime to two hours. One of the most iconic shots from the trailer saw Jin Urso limping forward at the top of the transmission tower, only to come face to face with a TIE fighter. And while fans were surprised to see this moment absent from the film, apparently it was never even part of it, with the TIE fighter being added in solely for the trailer at the behest of the marketing team. Jin, Cassian, and Bodhi's introductions were all changed as well, with new scenes for each added near the start of the movie. Originally, the film would have cut from the prologue that saw Jin as a little girl to her as an adult in this meeting, which everyone felt was a pretty bland way to introduce her character as well as Cassian's. To remedy this and add more excitement and intrigue at the start of the film, they added the scene with Jin in prison followed by her escape from the transport. The same went for Cassian and Bodhi as well with their introductions, Cassian meeting the informant to learn about the Death Star, and Bodhi being led through Jeddah to see Saw Gerrera added to give their character stronger introductions. Not only that, but Cassian's scene in particular, which sees him actually kill the informant so that the Empire doesn't learn of his subterfuge, helped to set the tone for the rest of the film as it makes it clear we're not in for a typical, wholesome, family-friendly Star Wars adventure. Forrest Whitaker's Saw Gerrera also had his scenes drastically reworked, as evidenced by the noticeable change in his appearance from the teaser trailer, where he appeared bald, to the final version of the film where he's depicted as an older character with grey hair. Many of his lines from the trailer are also absent in the final film, and his characterization seems to be different too. Now, full disclosure, I can only speculate on what his original scenes were, as I look to repiece them from the trailers. And the trailer suggests that, unlike the film, the Rebellion isn't sure what the Death Star is yet, but they're aware of a weapon test for some sort of super weapon and need to learn what it is and how to destroy it. And for that, they go to Jin as a way to get to her father, which is why Jin then goes to Saw for help in her quest to reach him. In two of the trailers, we see Jin in Saw's headquarters explaining to him that the Empire's building a weapon capable of destroying an entire planet and encouraging him to help. This is your chance to make a real difference which is a further tip-off that she's there trying to convince him to help her and the rebels, since in the same scene in the movie, she just makes an introduction before trying to leave, deeming her role in the mission accomplished. They wanted an introduction, they've got it. I'm out now. The rest of you can do what you want. Additionally, after Jen asks for help in the trailer, we see a concerned and caring Saw caution her about joining the rebellion, almost trying to talk her out of it. What will you do when they catch you? 
will you do if they break you? But the version we see of him in the film is paranoid and completely mistrusting, even of Jin. Did you come here to kill me? Since Rogue One came out, many fans have wondered two things. First, would Gareth Edwards' original cut of the film have been better? And two, will we ever get to see it? It's important to note that Edwards was never kicked off the film. And while Tony Gilroy came in and did a lot of work to punch up the script and oversee some of the additional photography, Edwards has stressed that they all work together as a team until the very last moment to improve the picture, with Edwards present the entire time, even directing the iconic corridor scene with Darth Vader. Tony Gilroy, for his part, gave a definitive answer on which version was better, saying what was released was the absolute best possible version of the film you could have, leading me to believe both Gilroy and Edwards consider the theatrical cut of the film the definitive edition, and Edwards' original cut of the film more of a work in progress. Thanks for watching everybody and don't forget to like and subscribe to Bullets and Blockbusters for more great content.